Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So today's video, as you would have seen by the title, is why your BMW E60 and E90 key fob ain't working. Now, if you've got that fob, that's the one we're gonna be speaking about and I'm showing you all the common causes of what stopped this actually working and how you can repair it. And I'm gonna show you all the tricks and tips to make it work. These, very, very simple to diagnose and there's many faults on them that can easily be rectified at home without the need of having to get a new key fob as many people think and many people don't even tell you on YouTube because they don't understand how these keys work. Bearing in mind I make these keys on a daily basis, I understand how they work in full detail. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to show you how to repair your key fob at home on the cheap. When the blow up now everybody's so unusual with it. Shit. But said times in his rhymes because his memories. We run into New York, so you know. So here we have guys, two BMW keys. Now, if you notice, these are the two key fobs, and these are the most common key fobs used on the BMW E60, E90, E63, and this also applies for the E65 because they all run the same key. And the mini as well, just the mini's got the round key, but they all link on with the CAS and all use the CAS module, which is BMW security system. Now, a lot of you will find that your key fob ain't working. So the first one, um, which I don't have with me actually in one of my boxes above, is the diversity antenna, which can stop your key working from a range. And a lot of people think it's the battery inside. If you've got a problem with range on your key, it will not be your key or the battery itself. The range is to do with the diversity antenna and it picks up the signal, the megahertz signal from the key. That's the first one. I know I'll put a picture up here of the diversity antenna so you guys get a drift of what it is. And I will link my video above to show you how to locate that. The next one on these, if you're getting a weak signal, it could be that someone has programmed the wrong megahertz signal key to your car. And if you look on the back here, I don't know if you can see very clearly, you'll notice on the back here, on the right end, it's got like a megahertz signal and you can probably see just there, you'll see it in the flesh. And this one is 868 megahertz. Yeah, so that's a different one. Now, all different countries use a different megahertz signal, depending on your country, 315, 868, and I believe the other one is 4458 four, um, signaling. Now, a lot of people don't understand that is very, very important. If you've got the wrong megahertz signal, your car won't unlock and it will keep scrambling with the signals on the diversity tether into the CAS um, because every country is different. It's like if you get a key from the UK on a different megahertz signal to what it is in the US, it ain't going to work properly. Now, inside the key, you'll see here we've got the transponder. Now, if you see there, I'll just take this out. You'll see right here, these are all the buttons. So you've got the open, close, and the boot release. Then if you look on the back, you've got the transponder there which is the immobilizer chip, okay? Now, around here is usually where you'd have the battery. So your battery would go into the contacts right above here. And as you see, we have desoldered it. From here, you'll see the holes. That's where the battery usually goes and sits in this area here, covers that area. What ends up happening is the battery weakens or it comes off contact where the solder is no longer holding, where people have dropped it so much, and it ends up losing connection with the board itself. Now, you can open your key just like this one is by cutting it open, but you will need to buy a new casing, which they ain't expensive. They're right here, and this is a new casing as you'll see right there. That's one of the new cases they just clipped together, and it looks like the original BMW one. This is a new one, I always have spares sitting here, and that's what they look like. You just drop the transponder in there, like so, and you'll just put the key on top, and then close it up, and it'll click together, and then you've got a fully functional working key again. They work brilliantly, they're not expensive to buy, but these you can buy very cheaply to buy new cases. Now, when you open it up, you just want to make sure everything's intact, that the battery's intact, because you'll see on the board, it can come loose. And I have desoldered this one from the board already in a previous video, which I'll put up above. You might have to solder a new battery. The batteries are soldered and they're not rechargeable. So you will have to change the battery in the controller. It is a common problem. A lot of time though, they do lose connection 
where they're not properly soldered, where someone's either changed a battery before or where someone's been dropping a key so much or got water damaged and it just loses the solder connection and it doesn't function sometimes and then sometimes it does, like sometimes you'll hear it go on, sometimes you won't. Another problem is if your battery's dying in the controller, one thing you'll notice on them is that when you press it to unlock the car, it doesn't unlock, then you'll get your key, you'll open your car up, which a lot of people end up telling me, they get, and I always tell them what the problem is, then the key fob will start working. That's because you've sent power to the car. Once you put the key in the ignition, it's trying to charge a dead battery. So it charges it up for a bit, the moment you use it for once or twice to open the car up, then the battery goes dead because it ain't holding charge any longer. So that is another common issue with these controllers that the battery is just that deflated from being overcharged, overcharged, that your controller battery ends up dying out. Now, Another problem which a lot of people ain't aware of on these is the batteries that come out and they're interchangeable. Now, if you see on these ones, this one's got that. These have a lot of issues, especially if you've originally had one made, especially if it ain't a genuine BMW one. Okay, they look genuine, they work well, but they have one floor on them. These have got the transponder built in on them. The only floor on them is the battery. If you can see here, the battery is quite loose and you can push it down onto its contacts. These like to wobble about inside the remote. They're 2032 batteries. They wobble about in the remote, as you see there, and they come loose, and then all of a sudden, your central locking will stop working. And this is a problem I see a lot. So what you've got to do is get a piece of paper, stick it in there, put your cover on, so it pushes the battery down into the remote like that, so it makes contact constantly because otherwise they wobble about and they lose contact and then you'll notice that your key fob ain't working and it just won't open a car or lock the car. Because a lot of the time, people drop these and they don't realize that they're using cheap keys. Um, the battery will come loose from its contacts, then the car won't open and it lose, all it does, lose contact from the internals on the board inside. So you just need a piece of paper, push it down, put the cover on and hold, make sure it holds down in place constantly on the board. So another problem with these, and if you'll see here, this is the car access system, this is the CAS security module, is the key coming misaligned from the CAS. Now, to realign them, you put the key in the ignition, you can use ISTA to realign it. That is another issue that happens with these, where the key, DME and the CAS lose all synchronization from the rolling codes, uh, which is the immobilizer. And a lot of people get no crank, no start, or the car's turned over but not starting surely because the keys lost signal with the CAS and it just needs to be realigned. It's something you can do with many tools these days and it's not hard at all. This is the CAS module, as you'll see, and this is the security module that BMW use. You'll find it's located under the driver's side, running from the starter lock down underneath the panel where your steering wheel is. And you'll find it's located and bolted above. The next one on these is a blocked key. Now, I get a lot of people buying keys off eBay thinking they're gonna work with their car. If the key has been blocked by BMW, only specialists can unblock that key, like me, um, and other, a few other specialists around the world as well, via the CAS module, which you need to take um, special software, a programmer, to unblock the key, um, to re-enable the key, or also swipe the key to make it blank again, which is possible, again, with certain programmers. A lot of people don't understand that and think you can just go and buy a key off eBay and it's gonna work and the key can sometimes be blocked. Or you can buy a car with two keys and the owner doesn't tell you that the key itself has actually been blocked, one of them, but one of them does work. And probably the owner didn't know that because they haven't used it theirself. If it's blocked, then of course it won't open the car. It also won't start the car. It doesn't mean there's an issue. So don't think you need to change the batteries, you need to do this. If it's not starting the car and it's not opening the car, it means the key is probably blocked. Or it could be the board is faulty. The only way to find out is by checking with specialist software. Majority of the time on these though, it is the battery come loose from the board, the transponder itself, and the battery has been sold from here. You can resell them yourself. I've got a video up showing you how to do that and how to remove it. And this is what you'll find when you open your BMW key. That's the transponder and how it looks. And that's all the buttons. Days are how it looks. These are the EEPROM chips, which you would use to erase all the data on the actual key itself. So don't be fooled guys thinking um, there's problems with your keys. There's many issues that can cause your key not to work. And these are just a few of them and not a lot of them. But if your key's not working and you've tried all the above, then comment in the box below and I will be sure to help you with that. Okay, 
So as you see now, I've just shown you how to repair your BMW key fob if you find it's not working. As I said, there is many, many causes for this fob not working. Some of them are, as I said, the battery coming loose, especially if you've had a new remote fob. A lot of the time, it could be that your key has been come unpaired from the CAS and the DME. Some of the time, it could even be that your key is blocked. Some other times, it could be that you've got a dead battery. And some of the other times, it could even be your diversity antenna or a problem with your CAS module where the key has just come deleted from the car. There is a lot of things to check. You will need software for it, but these are the simple things to check. Firstly, if you're having problems with the key. As I said, these keys right here ain't very complex and BMW haven't changed it much over the years. It just takes a brain and some working out what to do. Like I said, I do specialize in these keys a lot, so I understand them very, very well. And if you see on the back here, you'll see what I was trying to tell you about having a megahertz signal. You'll see that one's got that right there. And that's what I was trying to explain to you. So that's the megahertz signal that you see. And this one on here is 315. So that will be for the US. So that's a US megahertz signal key. In the UK, we are 868 and Europe, and I believe in China, I think it's 458. So there is how to get your key working. Make sure you check all them things. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope now I actually help you get your key actually working on your car. I will link the other video for soldering new battery onto this video and also the diversity antenna so you guys can go and check that as well. Thank you very much for watching. It's BMW Dr. Dean here and goodbye.